Some people change jobs and even careers multiple times during their working lives, but there are those of us who find one thing and keep doing it. And a few people in Maine have been doing that as long as George Hale. He has been a fixture on radio in Bangor for close to 70 years and is still doing it. 207's Don Kerrigan, who's been around a while himself, is <laughs> yes, here yes, yes. with George Hale's story. Yeah, but nothing compared to George. George Hale, of course, is a legend among Maine broadcasters. He was trained for the business of radio back in the old school days when commercials were done live and you played 45 RPM records. He is still working at the microphone five days a week in the digital era at age 92. In Jacksonville, Florida, in the late 1930s. And I would sit in the yard on Atlantic Boulevard, which was a busy highway going to the beach. And I would describe to, to, to nobody in particular the cars going by. A young George Hale found his calling. They chopped the top of the broomstick off and made me a microphone. And I used to sit there on Sunday afternoon, make believe I was announcing. And I was like six years old. These people are making a lot of money. And 86 years later, Hale is still in front of the microphone, still hosting a morning radio show in Bangor, a job he's been doing since he got out of the Navy and went to announcer school in New York in the 1950s. And then I heard about this station in Maine that was new, and they were looking for help. So I got my Chevy and I drove up here to Maine, <laughs> and they hired me on the spot. That was WABI. That was WABI-TV. And I came up here for one year. You thought. I thought. <laughs> Miami Dade has come up with some real fine baseball teams in the past. and The rest is now. Airwaves history. Hale did some TV, but found his real home on radio on the daily morning show that bore his name. George Hale in the morning, a You were on WABI doing that morning show for at least 40 years? Oh, more than that, yeah. From LA to MDI to T3 R13, this is the George Hale Rick Tyler Show. And gee, look Almost 20 I years ago, George Hale was today. teamed up with Rick Tyler for their daily morning talk show, and both are still going strong. I wasn't really sure I wanted to do it. I was never a great fan of talk radio. Hale was hired to lean to the left on the show, Tyler to lean right. I did not think it was going to work. We were at each other's throat at the start, but something happened about two, three years in when I started understanding him, and I think he started understanding me. Do you express strong opinions on this show? Yeah, I do sometimes. Rick gets a, he sometimes yells at me. Last night, the University of Maine women's basketball team one big part of Hale's radio career has been mostly set aside. He used to broadcast high school and college sports, football, basketball, and baseball for generations of Maine athletes and fans. And he helped launch some other broadcast careers in the process. George was instrumental in so many ways. because, Including Rich Kimball, who began working in radio when still in high school, and that included doing basketball games with George Hale. The first game I did was a, a Class D tournament game. At halftime, it was 40 to 4. And he said, this is a great time for you to make your play-by-play -play debut. Why don't you do the second half? And I said, I, God, I'm not even paying attention to the game. He goes, nobody else is either. <laughs> Kimball has now been broadcasting sports and other radio shows for 47 years. This thing wasn't getting any publicity at all. But that is way less than his mentor, who is still at the mic five mornings a week. Did you think about retiring? My late wife... Uh, once said to me, you keep promising you're going to retire, but you're not going to do it. He takes a month off in winter to go to Florida, but then it's back to Maine and back to work. 
would anybody ever walk up to Stephen King, who I know quite well, and say, Stephen, you ought to stop writing. Nobody ever said to me, you ought to stop talking. He despairs at how some young broadcasters speak or pronounce words and at the lack of civility on and off the air. Everybody's an expert. Everybody hates something. Every, and it really drives me nuts. Why can't we just sit down and talk it out? But he keeps going. And people will call him up and say, you're just an old fart. <laughs> and that's true. Close to 70 years on the air. He's been lucky, George Hale says. What he doesn't say, but we will. So have the listeners. That's sports right up to the minute. This is the George Hale Rick Tyler show. Thanks to the radio station WVOM for letting us eavesdrop on their morning show and run around in their, in their studios to, uh, to, with the camera. Uh, George has wonderful stories, of course. We're going to put uh, at least one of those on our digital story uh, later on. He has been a longtime inductee into the Maine Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. And just last year, the MAB honored George by naming their scholarships the George Hale Legacy Scholarships, wow. which is quite an honor for a guy who is unlike any other in this business. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Don. Okay. Come